What makes the CRC tournament special? It doesn't matter your record or where you're ranked. When you enter York City Auditorium, all bets are off. Where the underdog always has that chance. Where the third grader sits in the balcony and dreams about lifting the trophy just like their hero down on the floor. Where a quarterfinal game can sound just like Championship Friday. And where Friday's championship games with fans of 13 conference teams converge to create a standing room only environment. Where sitting in the cold locker room, the anticipation builds. And you can feel the weight of expectations in the gym below you. Where every year state champions point to this tournament as the one to kickstart their title run. It's CRC Championship Friday on Strive Sports. Like an old weathered scrapbook, the York City Auditorium opens each, its pages each year at the end of January. And while the teams and towns have changed throughout the years, the high-level small school basketball has not. 26 state champions have played here, and even more finalists. Some could not win this tournament, the Crossroads Conference Tournament. Tonight we bring you inside. Welcome to Championship Night in York, the best little conference tournament in Nebraska. It's the CRC Championships on strivesports.com. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the York City Auditorium. My name is Eric Algan, and we've got the girls' championship up first between Exeter Milligan and Bruning Davenport Shickley. Tim Holes is with me for our championship games tonight. And Tim, these two teams uh, are certainly no stranger to big stages and big performances. We've got both pet bands playing tonight, and it just adds to the chill factor of the old auditorium. It's like the intro that you just got done reading Eric, this is what it's about right here. And of course, these two teams have played each other. These two teams are used to big atmospheres and being in tournament play and championship play. Just, it should be a really fun game to watch. This, it was got to be a little crazy when I started to really research these two teams at the CRC tournament. Uh, BDS, who has only been BDS, by the way, with their co-opting activities for, uh, what, seven or eight years now. Uh, but they won a CRC title in 16, and they were runners-up last year. Exeter Milligan, just Exeter Milligan, by the way. I didn't do Milligan and Exeter in this. Exeter Milligan won their last title for the CRC in 2013. They also won it in 08, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. They were also runners-up in 9, 11, and 12. So they were went 9, 11, oh, they went 03 to 09 being in the finals. They took 10 off. They were in the finals again in 11 and 12, and then won it again in 13. Is that the dynasty? Is that good? I don't know. I, I, I had to check. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it a little bit. Uh, BDS and Exeter Milligan have played each other twice already this year. Uh, once in Cadetics, it was a 50 to 42 BDS victory. It's a BDS game to it was a quarterfinal game, by the way. That's how big the Mudecas tournament is. Wow. That was a quarterfinal game just to get to the semifinals. And then in uh, it was just last week that played again. I believe it was in Exeter. 46-43 BDS wins in overtime. This will so be a great game. This should be just fantastic. And, of course, we'll have the guys game coming up between Exeter Milligan and Giltner next after this one. But uh, as far as girls' action, I, I don't think you can uh, you can ask for much more. Exeter Milligan, 15-4 and four on their season. Like we just said, two of those losses to these BDS Eagles. Um, they've got their, you know, they, they were the D2 volleyball champions this year. Uh, and, and that ended a little streak. The CRC for a while there in volleyball, the CRC champion was winning their class at state. This year, Meridian wins the CRC and they get runner up in D1, but Exeter Milligan, who was the runner up in the volleyball tournament, wins it in D2. That, that's just the way the seasons go in, in the CRC. And what's gonna make this so great is, is if you can see on your monitors, people are starting to come in. We mentioned at the last game that, you know, there's very little people here because it was an afternoon game and it got loud so quickly. This is going to get loud. <laughs> and what's really cool about Small School USA, Eric, is these are kids that they played volleyball and were very successful, but these are the volleyball players. All of the volleyball players are on the basketball team too. So they know each other and they played against each other. And some of these seniors, they probably played against each other for the last, you know, four years. So this will, will make it even more fun to watch. 
Starting lineups being introduced for BDS. They'll go with Jaden Kleinschmidt, Lexi Cadle, Megan Grote, Carly Elsnick, and Tara Lee Hudson in the starting lineup. Uh, last night it was Megan Grote, and it's it, on any given night, it can be anybody, don't get me wrong. But last night it was Megan Grote, six three pointers and 20 total points for BDS in their victory over Meridian. Meridian just put a hurting on Giltner for third place earlier this afternoon. So they're introducing the uh, the uh, non-starters right now for Exeter Milligan and head coach Jackson Krejci. Uh, this one, though, should be a lot of fun. And uh, we are looking at uh, Anna Sluka in the starting lineup, along with Catherine White, Kate Jansky, Hannah Beathy, and Tara Mueller will all be in the starting lineup tonight for Exeter Milligan, who will be the home team and wearing their white uniforms. But this is uh, this is the uh, the kids up in the balcony with a hot dog and an RC cola back in the day. Now it's a Pepsi, but you know whatever. Extra Milligan fans on the far side of the gym and the stu I love that the student sections though are are both on the floor. Uh, I like that opposite their own team bench. And I like that BDS has left the pep band intact for at least the start of this game. And I, I also found it interesting, Tim, that. Uh, very small schools that we're dealing with here. Very good pep bands. My compliments to the bands. Well, and, and I'm going to guess that some of the some of the members in the pep band are on the court playing right now too. <laughs> right. Well, I know that's the case for Exeter Milligan because I did see a couple of the guys that will be in the championship later were they, playing they, in the pep they band took for a the shower girls. And now they're playing uh, the trumpet. And we're ready to go between Exeter Milligan and BDS. It will be the Timberwolves with the first possession. Anna Sluka will set up the offense for the Timberwolves. And it looks like a zone look on defense to start things up for BDS. That's Mueller in the corner. Guarded by Grote. Hounded by Megan right now. Cross court, tipped and stolen away. Carly Elsnick on the far side. You mentioned, Tim, how have these girls, yeah, have, have they met? They know, of course they know each other. I mean, especially when you start talking about girls like Carly Elsnick and Catherine White. These girls play against each other like nine times over the course of one school year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the time they're seniors, they're like, yeah, yeah, send me a Christmas card. Well, and you you mentioned, too, that um, they've already played each other twice. They're, I think they probably know what they're going to do. But the thing is, is just ex it's, now, it's now about execution. They're not going to throw any trick plays, you know, this late into the season. So it's just a matter of execution where it might be like, you know, you might know what we're going to do, but you don't know how well we're going to do it. It also, I think, makes for an interesting, uh, interesting dialogue when you know the other team so well, personnel-wise especially, what wrinkles as a coach do you throw out there? Do you s save a set play or two for a team like BDS that you, you know you're going to see multiple times throughout the year? Sure, and another thing they may do, might do is – Matchups. If they're going man, they might set up some different matchups too. Megan Grote picking up where she left off last night. Gives her seven threes in the last four quarters and minute and a half. And the opening possession or opening points of the game belong to the BDS Eagles. As on to the block, it was saved back in. Hannah Beathy gets a hold of it and then a travel by Sluka. So in the early going here, three turnovers for Exeter Milligan. And one for BDS. Megan Grote brings it up. Mentioned in that semifinal win, 20 points. Six three-pointers. That's one off the CRC tournament individual game record set in 2017 as a hanging shot by Cato will not fall. Taken down in, in, initially by Jansky, but then she has it ripped away by Kleinschmidt. So let's call that four turnovers already now for Exeter Milligan in the early going here. Cato down the lane, off the high shot with the right hand, no good, and Mueller pulls down the rebound for Exeter Milligan. Two great possessions by BDS there. They had two great open looks, so good execution. Pass tipped out of bounds. Kleinschmidt had a hand on that one. Off the pass from Sluka. Kate Jansky, leading score individually for either team. She would lead both teams at uh, almost 16 a contest.
Well, Eric, if I'm not mistaken, they, I don't think Exeter Milligan has actually had a shot. I think you're right. That's five turnovers without getting a look at the rim yet for the Timberwolves in the first two and a half minutes of this contest. Elznick a dribble drive down the lane with the left hand. She nice finishes. Move. Carly Elznick with her first basket of the game. 5 nothing BDS on top. Sluka draws the foul in the backcourt on Kleinschmidt. One thing that you notice too is the sportsmanship just right there as we had two, you know, two young girls showing a lot of hustle and they help each other up and I love seeing that. Still the first quarter though, Tim. There's a lot of basketball <laughs> to be played here. <laughs> Jansky right court or excuse me, that was Beefy and oh got, got lucky there. It could have been a turnover. Hudson knocks it away. As Beefy thought Sluka was maybe going to stop under the hoop and Anna just kept on going. EM just needs to keep their composure. That's a good shot. Beefy along the baseline. Hannah knocks it down. And so despite the five turnovers and not scoring for two and, or three and a half minutes almost, it's still a one possession game. So that's uh, that's one thing and going to get it right back after Cato had the feet going just a little bit after the fact when she caught the pass. Subs into the game. Exeter Milligan bringing Kelsey Bigelow into the ball game. And BDS brings in Reagan Alves. Jansky across the timeline, throws it on the wing. Catherine White goes baseline, low off balance shot, will not fall. Offensive rebound, Jansky and Kate puts it in. Five four, our score. Alf's on the block, turns, kicks it out. There's a three from Grote, no, and the rebound. Alf's no, God, no, it's this is Jansky with it. And into the front court, Bill Bigelow will set things up. And Grote poked it free from Beefy, but out of bounds off of Megan, so it will stay with Exeter Milligan. On the inbounds, a 2-3 zone for BDS now. Jansky, quick three on the wing, knocks it down. And so with all of those turnovers in the first two and a half minutes, BDS now finds themselves down two after Jansky's got five of the seven for extra Milligan. A shot in the lane by Alves, no. And a rebound for Mueller and a foul on Alves. The last possession by EM, it, that was all created by the dribble drive, Eric, if you notice that. They, they broke the two defenders up top, so they both had to collapse on the dribble drive, and they kick it out for the three-pointer, so that was a great execution. Macy Kamler, really good freshman. That will be a one to watch for a couple of years, and that might be a turnover. Yes, it will. It's off the hand of Catherine White, and a turnover for Exeter Milligan, so they've got six of them now in the quarter. So Kamler, number 11 into the game along with uh, 20. That is Nicole Swartzendruber. Alfs with position on the block, kicks it back up. This is Kamler, drive and kick out. Mueller got a hand on that one. Now Cato to her knees, little contact and a travel is the call. Jansky across the timeline, gets it to Bigelow. 7-5 our score, Exeter Milligan on top. The Timberwolves ranked number three in Class D2 by the Omaha World Herald this week. BDS number one in D1 this week. Scramble on the rebound, who's gonna come up with it? It's Swartz and Druber eventually, but a jump ball. And they're gonna give it to uh, BDS on the alternating possession. Megan Grote back into the ball game for Eagle coach Shanna Gerberding. And Carly Elznick also comes in as well. So against the press, that one knocked free, but it is controlled as, Cam or as uh, 
Elznick had it on the wing. Now that's Kamler, right side of the circles to Carly on the wing. Dumping it down low. Last to touch, it was Mueller. I think that will be a fun matchup to watch. Mueller and Alfs in the post on both ends of the floor, yes, Tim. Yes, it'll be a physical game down there. Terrace Hare is already coming out of her pulling tail. Basket good and a foul and a chance at a three-point play for Carly Elznick. <laughs> on Catherine White. That is her first, the team's... I think that's the first foul on uh, Extra Milligan. It is, and Elznick converts on the three-point play. So 8-7 our score, two and a half minutes to go first quarter. A three from White on the left wing is up and good. Catherine White is on the board for the Timberwolves. 10-8. Timberwolves back in front. Quick shot at the other end is no good. And the defensive rebound for Jansky. Kate already with four rebounds here in the first quarter as the shot was put up by Schwarzendruber. And now a skip pass for Jansky. Bigelow at the top against the zone look for BDS. Jansky, one dribble, runner in the lane, no good. Grote secures the loose ball rebound. Wants an outlet pass up ahead. Good drive. With a right hand, cannot finish, but the rebound is going to stay with BDS as Schwarzendruber took it hard to the rim. Anna Sluka in for Exeter Milligan. Lexi Cadle in for BDS. A two-point Timberwolf lead with a minute 45 to go here in the first. Grote to toss it in for Cato. Grote comes off a triple screen. Extra Milligan does well, Sluka, to fight through all that traffic. Now Kamler on the left side. It's a screen and a roll from Elznick, and Cato didn't have the feet set. Traveled with it when she caught it. I like what BDS was doing, though, there, Eric. They were starting to slow it down, get into an offense, and get a good look. Catherine White back in. Got just a real quick breather there. This might be the point where we mentioned there's not a ton of subs for either team. It's going to be about a seven-player rotation each way. So we're not going to see, you know, nine in a regular rotation unless fouls dictate otherwise. There's another turnover. Alfs stepped in front of that post-entry pass and took it away for BDS. There's Alfs turning in the lane. Her shot will not go. Jansky with her fifth rebound of the first quarter. Bigelow will bring it up for the Timberwolves. Kelsey down the lane, kicks it on the wing. White puts up the shot, no. Cato with the rebound. Lexi drives in, kicks it out. This is Elznick, now Kamler on the wing. Macy goes baseline all the way under the hoop. Her shot will go. It's a nice move. The freshman with her first points in a CRC championship game. That might not be her last, I'm just saying. We're all square at 10 apiece. 30 seconds to go in the opening period. Timberwolf coach Jackson Krejci calling out for one shot, but he wants his girls to take at the end of this period. Jansky, right side of the circles for Sluka in the corner. Anna throws it back up top. Now 11, 10 seconds left. Sluka on the wing. Anna will fire the three. Long no good. Elznick the rebound. And Carly with three seconds with two from half court. This would count. That might have been partially blocked. By Jansky, and that's your first quarter. All square at 10 apiece. Come back for more from the CRC Championship after this. It's thanks to you that we're where we are today. We're proud to watch these communities grow because they're our communities too. Our neighbors, our friends, it's where we live. These are all our hometowns. And no matter what, the people who will continue to serve your needs with the hometown support you know and trust are just down the street. Cornerstone Bank, growing together. 
Nova Fitness Equipment of Omaha has provided the very best weight room, track and field, and sports surfacing products for over 30 years in Nebraska. They provide Cybex, Matrix Fitness, Vertimax, Tough Stuff, Pro Elite, Stairmaster, York Barbell, Troy Barbell, and UCS track and performance products. From rubber flooring, strength equipment, cardio products, and sports performance accessories, Nova Fitness Equipment has what you need to make your athletic program successful. Contact Nova Fitness Equipment today at their home office in Omaha or online at Nova Fitness Equipment. Hey, welcome back to the CRC tournament. What we're going to do here, we're going to be making this little interactive uh, throughout the rest of the evening. Anyone that is watching and listening, let us know where you are listening from. Hop on Twitter and use at Strive TV on at, Twitter. At, at Strive Sports at on Twitter. At Strive Sports on Twitter and let us know where you're listening from. We'd love to hear from you. And who you're rooting for. We always yeah. like to make mention of that. That'd be great. You, know. we, you can also, if you're familiar with Twitter, you can use the hashtag CRCBB18. That would be CRCBB18. Again, if you're listening, let us know where you're at. And go ahead at Strive Sports. At Strive Sports. An offensive rebound and putback for Macy Kamler. Puts BDS in the lead here to start things up. In the second, and a turnover in the backcourt. Kayla Geiger, a 5'3 sophomore, was back there. And a quick shot for Tara Lee Hudson. Hadn't called Tara Lee's name yet. Her first points of the night. And a quick 4-0 start here in the first 55 seconds of the second quarter. Sluka pressured up top, gets it to Jansky on the right side, and back to Anna. Swinging around Catherine White, up top, that's taken away. Lexi Cato, coast to coast, got it to go. And a timeout for Jackson Krejci and Exeter Milligan. That's a 6 nothing start in the second quarter in the first minute 11. Cato gets her first basket, and it's Tim, it's an eerily similar start to the second quarter is what we saw in the first quarter for yes. Exeter Milligan. Timberwolves have turned it over three times in a minute 10, and it's six points the other way for Exeter Milligan, or for uh, BDS, I should say. You know what the coach is saying here in the timeout is just need to relax. I mean, if they're, if they're going to pressure us, they're doing exactly what they want us to do is they want us to hurry. And, you know, you can do things quick, but not in a hurry. Make quick moves to get open. Uh, quick passes, but not hurried passes, because if you start getting into a, a hurried type of an offense, it gets sloppy. So again, BDS, they are going to stay with the full court press, and why not at this point? Sluka gets it in to beat the in, now back to Sluka. So a quick 6-0 start for BDS to take what was a tie game to a six-point lead. Catherine White, dribble drive, hanging shot, no, but a foul called and two free throws coming. For Catherine. Terry Lee Hudson called for her first personal. That is the third team foul against BDS and two shots for Catherine White. The first is good. Kamler pulls down the rebound on the second. BDS with a five-point lead in the basketball. Hudson trying to post up down low. Loose gets it back, gets it to Kleinschmidt. Jaden high off the glass, no. Fight on the rebound. That's a great hustle play by Beefy to keep it alive. Extra Milligan with the basketball, but not for long. Kleinschmidt takes it away again. That's 11. First half turnovers already for Extra good Milligan. Good decision, good decision. Cato slows down, gets it for Kleinschmidt, who knocks down the triple. Jaden Kleinschmidt, her first points of the night, and an eight-point BDS lead. And a travel again. White indecisive near half court. Already five turnovers in two minutes and nine seconds of this second quarter. Cato thought about the three, gives it up for Kleinschmidt. Why not? Back-to-back -back threes wow. for Jaden Kleinschmidt. 
And BDS breaking this one open. The lead 11 right now. Bigelow a drive. Dumps it onto the block for Beathy. Gets bumped out in the corner and then Cato knocks it out of bounds. Exeter Milligan needs to remain patient here. I mean, you can't get all these points back in one or two possessions. You have to have solid possessions with good looks to the basket. Bigelow up top against the 2-3 zone of BDS. Now Beathy. And Cato again knocks that one out of bounds. So the other thing that you gotta, you gotta try to take advantage of if you're extra Milligan, BDS very confident about getting out in passing lanes, and that's where backdoor cuts start to come into your offensive favor. That is, if you got it long enough to get a backdoor cut off, there's another hustle play by Kleinschmidt, who picks up another steal for the Eagles. At the other end, it's Kamler who puts it in. Great transition points. It is all BDS right now. Their lead is 13. It's a 14 to one start in three minutes and 15 seconds right now in the second quarter. Trying to take it away again. Kleinschmidt gets the jump ball and the possession does go to BDS. So it's another Exeter Milligan turnover. Swartz and Druber and Elsnick and Alfs all into the game for BDS. Kamler up top. Alf's trying to post up on the, on the block there with Tara Mueller down there. There is Reagan. Kicks it out for Elsnick. Now Cadel. Elsnick. Swartz and Druber. Nicole with a drive. Blocked away by Tara Mueller. It'll stay with BDS. Kamler gets it to Elsnick. Cut down the lane. Cato running shot will not fall, though, and Mueller pulls down the rebound. Catherine White quickly into the front court for Exeter Milligan. Gets it to Bigelow. Kelsey for three. No. Offensive rebound, Catherine White. That no good. And a defensive rebound for Elsnick. Swartz and Druber back to Elsnick. Carly spins down the lane. Now Cato's got it. Lexi. From the left side, no, Mueller the rebound. Four boards for Tara Mueller so far in this game. Bigelow has it stripped from behind by Alfs. To Cato, two on one. Lexi, got it. Timeout Exeter Milligan as the Eagles of BDS flying high, a full timeout. We'll come back after this on strivesports.com. My name is William Scarf. I'm a diesel tech here in York, Nebraska for Truck Center Companies. Before I started working here, I uh, helped a uh, well, smaller mechanic shop and uh, I did some work here and there. And then I started working on some engines at, my, at home in my shop. And then uh, that's when I kind of got my jump with diesel. Um, I've liked the experience they're giving me, um, the hours they're able to give me and uh, just the training and, and all the accessories. Pay is good, benefits are wonderful. Um, basically they, they offer basically all benefits. Pretty happy that I was able to find it so quickly right after uh, high school basically. Um, it was a really jump right into it and um, it turns out to be a really good place to start a career. 26 to 11 on the strength of 15 forced turnovers already in the first half by the BDS defense. Exer Milligan isn't shooting bad on offense. They just haven't had it enough to shoot enough times right now. Cross court, that's a dangerous pass and another takeaway. Cato trying to get the run out. Can't get that layup to go though. And it's White with a rebound. We saw Exeter Milligan in the first quarter 
Tim rack up five turnovers right away, but then once they settled down, were able to get back in this game. Now we've seen them turn it over a ton again here right away in this uh, second quarter. Well, the full court pressure by BDS is obviously causing Exeter Milligan some issues, but the extended zone in the half court too is causing causing havoc for Exeter Milligan. Anna Sluka back into the game as Hannah Beathy comes to the bench. Sluka up top. Bigelow on the wing. And Jansky, Kate, had five points in the second quarter, or first quarter, but another turnover. It's 17 of them already. That was a spacing issue there on Exeter Milligan. They just got to space themselves out where you're not making a pass that's three feet away because one person can guard two people. Cato, a little give and go with Alves. Nice dig down, though, by Sluka. And a reach-in foul is going to be called on Reagan Alves. That was really good defense there by Anna Sluka to double down, basically, and force the turnover. It is just turnover number five for BDS. That is the uh, second foul on Alfs, the fifth on the Eagles. And a loose ball near half court. Cato picks it up, gets it to Kamler, or excuse me, Kleinschmidt has it blocked once and twice as Janoski pulls down the second rebound. It still goes down as the 18th turnover. At least that didn't result in points. Sluka on the give and go. A little bump from Tara Lee Hudson. Will be the second on Tara Lee. That is going to be number six on BDS. So foul wise, six on BDS, just one on Exeter Milligan. Timberwolves, though, remember they've scored just one point. Have, I don't have they taken an official shot? They've taken M maybe a, one. Close to another turnover right there. Exeter Milligan, they just need to settle down and they just need to get a good set right here and get a good look, gain some confidence, whether the ball goes in or not, just have, have faith and trust in your teammates that they're going to help, uh, help you get set up for a good shot. Beathy skips it to Sluka on the back side of the defense. Hannah goes underneath and steps out of bounds. Lexi Cato brings it up. For BDS, the lead is 15. Cato gets a screen, pops a three, and swishes it home. Lexi Cato with seven points in the quarter. BDS's lead is 18. Minute eight to go in the second period. Sluka right of the circles. Jansky on the wing. Bigelow. Mueller squares up. On Hudson, kicks it out. Jansky for three. That was a great look. Oh, boy, that was needed. Kate Jansky knocks down. That's her second three of the game. And the first point since, well, it's the first field goal of the second quarter for Exeter Milligan. And they got that free throw from Catherine White about 30 seconds into the period, too. That had been a long scoring drought. Well, notice what BDS is doing. I mean, you can tell they're very well coached. And just in regards to the little things that they're doing, they're moving without the ball, they're catching it, you know, on the jump stop in a triple threat position. Even though they might have a big lead like this, they're still doing the little things that, that make them solid. Cato on the dribble drive, gets it to Elznick in the corner. Now Schwarzenegger, Hudson from the free throw line. No, Beathy the rebounder and a foul on Kleinschmidt. And this is important because that's the seventh team foul on BDS. And so a one and one at the other end for Hannah Beefy. Well, with the aggressive defense that they're playing, that's not you know uncommon that they they're on their seventh foul, and it's it, you know it's okay, it's uh, seven seconds to go until half, but an aggressive defense, you're going to foul. So this is a one and one for Hannah Beefy, her first trip to the foul line. She does have two points so far, make it three. And we'll get the back end coming up. Just another reminder, use that uh, Twitter and let us know where you are listening from at Strive Sports. We'd love to hear from you. Shooters bounce for Hannah Beefy. You can also use on Twitter the hashtag CRCBB18. Let us know where you're at. Cato, this will be at the buzzer. Got wow. it. Lexi Cato 
gets the runner to go. And that is a fantastic end to a great second quarter for the BDS Eagles. Strike up the band. The Eagles lead by 15 at the break. We'll come back for some halftime stats and hey, we'll check our Twitter coming up next on strivesports.com. It's thanks to you that we're where we are today. We're proud to watch these communities grow because they're our communities too. Our neighbors, our friends, it's where we live. These are all our hometowns. And no matter what, the people who will continue to serve your needs with the hometown support you know and trust are just down the street. Cornerstone Bank, growing together. Nova Fitness Equipment of Omaha has provided the very best weight room, track and field, and sports surfacing products for over 30 years in Nebraska. They provide Cybex, Matrix Fitness, Vertimax, Tough Stuff, Pro Elite, Stairmaster, York Barbell, Troy Barbell, and UCS track and performance products. From rubber flooring, strength equipment, cardio products, and sports performance accessories, Nova Fitness Equipment has what you need to make your athletic program successful. Contact Nova Fitness Equipment today at their home office in Omaha or online at Nova Fitness Equipment dot com. My name is William Scarf. I'm a diesel tech here in York, Nebraska for Truck Center Companies. Before I started working here, I uh, helped a uh, well, smaller mechanic shop and uh, I did some work here and there. And then I started working on some engines at, my, at home in my shop. And then uh, that's when I kind of got my jump with diesel. Um, I've liked the experience they're giving me, um, the hours they're able to give me, and uh, just the training um, and all the accessories. Pay is good, benefits are wonderful. Um, basically, they, they offer basically all benefits. Pretty happy that I was able to find it so quickly, right after uh, high school, basically. Um, it was a really jump right into it and um, it turns out to be a really good place to start a career.
Hey, welcome back. We are impressed, Eric. We have gotten some feedback Love it. from our Twitter shout out. And this is what is so amazing about what Strive Sports does and the service that they provide. We have listeners from Ohio and Texas. Susan Ruling, I hope I am saying that last name correctly, from Dublin, Ohio. Thank you so much for joining us. And we can continue this conversation. You, you said go Timberwolves. Uh, we want to know what's your connection. So continue to have that conversation on Twitter. If you feel uh, brave enough to do so, we'd love to keep the conversation going. And Eric, you have someone else too. I got another one. Uh, speaking of Texas, they're from Central City, but Gail and Stan Ferris from Central City are in Texas right now, but they are watching and cheering on Exeter Milligan as well. So that is very cool. And uh, so we've got Dublin, Ohio, and somewhere in Texas. Yes. And we know for sure. Yep. Thank you watching. so much for joining us. So, again, if you're on Twitter, you can tag us at Strive Sports. Make sure that's not the first thing. So you got if you're going to start at Strive Sports, put a period first. So you can go period, at Strive Sports, yes. where you're listening from, who you're cheering for. Love to find that out. And uh, you can also use the hashtag CRCBB18. That will be the uh, the best one to get, and uh, and we'll check that out, and uh, you know we'll take a look at that throughout the rest of the night. Try to keep up on some conversations. Love to know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for, perhaps what your connection to the team that you're cheering for is. You got a you got a granddaughter, you got a niece, you got a cousin. Uh, by the way, we got a nice standing ovation. I would say that both bands tonight, and I said it before, and I'll say it again. Both bands have been outstanding. Literally, we brought the BDS fans to their feet with the extra Milligan band. <laughs> That's how good we were right there. So, got to appreciate that. Uh, shout out for the activities, not just the athletics. BDS 31, extra Milligan 16. A reminder that this game was tied at 10 at the end of the first quarter. BDS started the second quarter on a 16 to one run to make it 26 to 11, and it didn't get much better. They outscore Exeter Milligan 21 to six in the second to take this 31-16 lead. Tim, the biggest issue right now for Exeter Milligan, I might not even have to worry about shooting. I just have to worry about retaining the basketball. Yeah, that's a credit. Uh, that's a credit to BDS's defense right. too. And as you watch, as you watch the second half, I'm gonna. I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep the same defense. Just watch what they're doing in the full court set. They're really making Exeter Milligan rush the ball up the court, which has caused turnovers. But then when they're in the half court set, they're really extending and they're doing a lot of trapping, which is again, it's a gimmick, Eric. If you know, if you've all played the game before, you know that trap is. Gonna, they, they want you to hurry up, and 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 they're doing that, you know, correctly. So Exeter Milligan, again, they just need to slow down. And Coach Krejci, if and what I what I love about watching him on the sideline, and I don't know if Aaron. He might not have a right angle to, to get him there because he's at a tough spot. Is just watch his composure, and that is relayed to his team. So as much as Exeter Milligan could be panicking right now, if you watch the coach, he does a great job of keeping his composure, and, and he's just got to, you know, that's another learning opportunity here uh, for the kids too is, you know what, we might be down, but we got to continue to keep our composure. Cameras froze up just a touch here, so. And I did mention Aaron. Aaron's our camera guy, right, Eric? Right, yes. Yeah. He doesn't have his headset on right now, so he can't hear a word yeah. we're saying about him. So <laughs> he's also my little brother, so I can talk smack. He's doing a great all job. I want. Scoring in that first half for BDS, Jaden Kleinschmidt, six. Lexi Cadle, nine. All 15 of those points in the second quarter between those two. Macy Kamler, six. Megan Grote, three. Carly Elsnick, five. Tara Lee Hudson, two. For Exeter Milligan, Catherine White, four. Kate Yonsky, eight. Hannah Beathy, four. There's Kate Yonsky. No, and the defensive rebound for Tara Lee Hudson. We Coach are underway. Coach can't be disappointed in that shot. Yep, that, that finally an open shot that wasn't rushed or forced and didn't have five turnovers preceding it. Yeah, you should be pretty happy with that. Hudson back in, back out. Tara Lee gets it back on the block then as Elsnick comes baseline. And then deflected out of bounds by Hannah Beathy. The lineup, Extra Milligan has Sluka, White, Jansky, Beathy, and Mueller. BDS with Kleinschmidt, Cadel, Grote, Elsnick, and Hudson. There is Tara Lee. Hands it back to Megan Grote. Bobbled it for a moment. Got it back. Now Cadel 
On the right side, throws in the corner. Kleinschmidt open for three. No, almost. <laughs> and Beefy comes down with a rebound. I was nearly too quick on the, uh, the no good call there. Now Beefy into the corner it goes. That's actually a Bigelow instead of Sluka in the starting lineup in this second half. I beg your pardon for extra Milligan. It's the uh, Giltner boys making the trek along the far side up top. An offensive rebound for Mueller. Tara puts it up and in. That's the first points of the night for Tara Mueller. It's also her fifth rebound. Quickly to the other end. Here comes Elznick. Offensive foul. Eric, I love offensive fouls. And what I like about it, again, it's, it's, you know, it's coaching, but it's kids that know the game of basketball on, on just those. It's a hustle play. It really is. And it's, it just, it's just an indication of their basketball knowledge. Now Aaron's got his headset on so we can tell him. Great shot of Jackson Krejci. We were talking, Tim was especially there, about the demeanor of Coach Krejci. Very, uh, very cool, calm, and collected for the most part. He's a rooster, if I'm not mistaken, an old Milligan boy, so he's uh, yeah. he has come back home. And I, I find it interesting, you know, we'll see the extra Milligan boys, coached by Dean Phillippe, coming up next, and, and Dean has coached in Milligan forever. Yes. I, we think, we think it's 35 years. Um, Darcy White is an Exeter grad. She's the volleyball coach. Basically, the, the coaches of your sports have always been in Exeter slash Milligan at Exeter Dash Milligan, basically, right? I mean, they are they are lifers, if you will. And uh, that plays a big part when you come, you talk about small towns, you don't have to, uh, you, you, you know what kind of culture you're getting into. That's a great high, low look. You are, you are right, and, Eric, and you are right. Finishes. The feed from Hannah Beathy to Tara Mueller has made it an 11 point game, 31-20. Still a lot of time to go in this ball game. Grote on the right wing. That is a three from Elsnick. That is no good, but an offensive rebound for Kleinschmidt. Hudson, elbow, good by Tara Lee. And she leaves it up there for everyone to see after the fact. VDS continues to have the full court press. And then falls back after one pass. So Bigelow walks it up now. 535 and counting here. No need for EM to panic here. A three from Catherine White. That's no. not a bad shot, though. Nope. Kleinschmidt the rebound. Now Hudson on the block, hands it back to Kleinschmidt. Her quick shot, no good. And White tried to just dribble the rebound instead of grabbing it. And the jump ball stays with BDS. Along the baseline, a three is good by Carly Elznick. And the lead is 16. Just under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. They want the lob down low. Mueller trying to get position. Didn't get a shot up, but did draw a foul on BDS. Megan Grote with her first personal. Second team foul of the half. That does make, if you're keeping track at home, that is nine fouls whistled against BDS in the game. Still only one against Exeter Milligan. Definitely something to keep an eye on as we go farther on this game. Nobody in, in big foul trouble for BDS, but a couple of girls do have two. Jansky's three, no good. Offensive rebound, Tara Mueller, and she's fouled. And Tara will get a couple of free throws. Reagan Alves just picked up foul number three, so she's the first girl with three fouls. By the way, a follow-up to our uh, hashtag CRCBB18 on Twitter. Gail and Stan Ferris are the grandparents of Patrick and Caitlin Murphy awesome. at Extra Milligan. So appreciate Strive TV. Well, we appreciate you, Gail and Stan Ferris, watching us tonight down there in Texas. 
Uh, Susan Ruling, hey, here we go. Uh, Hannah Beathy and Jackson Beathy are her niece and nephew. So there we go. A non, then an offensive rebound. Hey, there's Hannah Beathy. How about hey. that? That's how that works. <laughs> Yansky can't finish, though. By the way, uh, Kate's got eight rebounds to lead everybody. Cadle and in rhythm three and knocks it down. 12 points in the ball game for Lexi Cadle, and the lead is 19 now. And two minutes ago, we were at the point where it was close to an 11 point game, and now it's, you know, it's that quickly it can change. Mueller at the high post, but the ball on the floor got it knocked away. Hatching the egg, they do give <laughs> Krejci the, re the uh, timeout. So, for fortunate break. Can I say that? I mean, that's kind of what it looked like, right? It's like a mama hen, you know, nestling down. So, 39-20. Uh, and we'll, we'll go back to the uh, we'll go back to the Twitter. And Aaron, if you can get into the BDS coaches circle there for the opportunity. Take you a look at. You kind of see it in the corner there. Again, look at what the coaches are doing, and this is one thing that U.S. parents can look at too. Watch how the coaches interacting with the players. You're not, you're not seeing panic. And then again, that's a life lesson that these kids will take. If you've played sports before, you can understand those coaches that you really appreciated that, that really had that soothing effect, uh, regardless if you were up big or if you were down a lot. Um, it's just something I know that it, it just really look for it and appreciate it. And I know in today's society where, you know, we want this instant gratification and a lot of these kids have invested a lot of money and time into whatever activity that they're in. And I know sometimes you can uh, disagree with maybe some of the coaches' decisions, but watch how they interact with the players. Oh, no, extra Milligan just forgot which hoop they were going to. And it's an over and back violation. I hate to say it, but... Well, now, now B, yeah, now the officials are confused, too. BDS is going to the right. Extra Milligan threw the ball in, thinking that was a full-court press. No, it was an inbound underneath their own hoop. Oh, my goodness. And, and I hate to say this, but thank goodness it was a violation first. Catherine White had an open layup that she made. That would have been two points for BDS. It's not the first time I've seen that happen. Well, I, I've seen it in a, in a much more dire situation that happened. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. I'll tell you about it sometime. <laughs> uh, under four to go now in the third and a 19-point BDS lead. Kleinschmidt goes all the way underneath the rim. Now along the baseline, that's Grote for a long two. No, but Kamler tracks down an offensive rebound. She's got three boards herself. Kamler along the baseline, guarded by Sluka. Macy, little fadeaway shot. Too strong. Catherine White, the defensive rebound. Four rebounds for Catherine. Bigelow hounded in the backcourt, still. Now gets it to Beathy, finally. And Sluka has it. Now Bigelow trying to get something set up offensively. Sluka on the wing. Skip pass for Jansky. Kate, baseline. Pass, tip, stolen away. Cato comes up with a loose ball. 21 turnovers in the game for Exeter Milligan. Cato might have got away with an extra step. Kamler all the way to the rim. Missed the shot. Beathy the rebound, and then she traveled with it. So we got to give her the rebound and the travel, because you can't travel unless you have the basketball. Well, you, know that, you know that Exeter Milligan, the girls have got to be frustrated. The coaches has to be frustrated. But, you know, we know, too, that this is just probably an off night for Exeter Milligan. If you look at the scores that they've played BDS before, that, you know, this is not an indication of how they've played all season. So they just have to battle through that frustration. And it's not just that they've played, you know, this is the third time this season. It's the third time in two weeks they've played. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not like they played once at the beginning of January or December and – Maybe once the first first game back after Christmas and now here tonight, you know. Uh, three times in two weeks, yeah, they get kind of tired of seeing each other. Well, but credit man, to BDS yeah. for, for forcing the issue for yeah. Exeter Milligan so much tonight. 
Bigelow will bring it up now for the Timberwolves. Down by 19, 222 and counting here in the third quarter. That is Geiger who checked in the ball game. Now a bounce pass. Jaden Papik also in there for extra million. Now Bigelow and Kleinschmidt. They're going to get a foul on Kleinschmidt that time as Bigelow had the ball in front of her and Jaden kind of wrapped her arms around her. It'll be the third on Jaden. That's the third team foul this half. And Kleinschmidt comes out as Schwarzenegger comes in. Sluka back onto the wing for Papik. Anna gets it back on the block, forces the shot, draws the foul on Kamler. First on Macy, the fourth on BDS. And, and I think it uh, probably goes without saying, but if you're extra Milligan, the more free throws you can shoot in this game, boy, I'd be going at that rim just about every possession down. First of all, you've got BDS, who, who is a little deeper to the bench. You've got them on the precipice of having some girls in foul trouble. Kleinschmidt and Alfs right now both have three as Sluka knocks down both free throws. You got a couple more girls with two, and, and that can be an interesting way to play a lot of second half basketball is with a, a couple of extra fouls. As Elznick puts up a quick one at the other end, no good. Sluka the rebound, Anna brings it out of there herself. Then as it's stolen away, Elznick comes up with a loose ball. On the block, Schwarzendruber, no. Rebound. I think out of bounds was Papik as she uh, had it for a moment, but maybe was out of bounds when she had it. BDS will inbound underneath their own hoop. Swartzendruber lines up the three. That misses. Fight on the rebound. Jump ball. Stays with BDS. Grote in the right corner. Onto the block for Kamler. Turned, little fadeaway is blocked by White. Catherine on the floor for the rebound. And and well, out of bounds they are saying was maybe Kamler was out and had a hand on the ball. That must have been it. In any effect, extra Milligan's got it. When you look at that BDS, put those possessions there, they knocked off about a minute and a half off the clock where Exeter Milligan could have been chipping away at the lead. White had one blocked. Now Papik stays with it, gets a couple of rebounds, and finally puts it up and in. So that gets down to a 15-point game. This is four straight for Exeter Milligan. Grote in the corner, back to Elznick. Carly baseline, left side all the way to the rim and good. Big basket there from Carly Elsnick. Five in the quarter, 10 for the game for Carly. And now we've reached track meet status. This is a white hard charge and an offensive foul. A play, a play there that Catherine probably needs to realize. Okay, she was set pretty good. Either go, just go around her or stop jump, before you get yeah, there. Jump stop and, and jump shot. But we're up here watching the game. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, and I haven't been hounded into, into 20, 23 turnovers on the night uh, for as a team. Yeah. As Catherine just about got that one and knocked it free. And Sluka does pick up the steal. Now she has it knocked. And it's White picks it up, banks it in. Holy cow. Cato pushes it to the other end. Schwarzenegger blocked by White, but out of bounds. Okay, now we're getting fun. <laughs> now, as a, an official scorebook keeper, this is kind of where it can get kind of hectic. Sometimes you have your head down as you just uh, finish up one player a score, and they're already scoring at the other end. Kambler to toss it in. Gets it right back, Macy does, and got it over Beefy. PBS just does a great job of answering. Every time Exeter Milgan comes down and scores, they either get a turnover with their defense or they come down and score. 
Bigelow with two seconds. This would count at the buzzer, but it's well short, no good at the end of three. Still BDS with the lead, 43-26. We come back for the final eight minutes of the CRC championship game. It's thanks to you that we're where we are today. We're proud to watch these communities grow because they're our communities too. Our neighbors, our friends, it's where we live. These are all our hometowns. And no matter what, the people who will continue to serve your needs with the hometown support you know and trust are just down the street. Cornerstone Bank, growing together. Nova Fitness Equipment of Omaha has provided the very best weight room, track and field, and sports surfacing products for over 30 years in Nebraska. They provide Cybex, Matrix Fitness, Vertimax, Tough Stuff, Pro Elite, Stairmaster, York Barbell, Troy Barbell, and UCS track and performance products. From rubber flooring, strength equipment, cardio products, and sports performance accessories, Nova Fitness Equipment has what you need to make your athletic program successful. Contact Nova Fitness Equipment today at their home office in Omaha or online at Nova Fitness Equipment Com. BDS outscores Exeter Milligan 12 to 10 in that third quarter to extend what was a 15 point lead to 17 as we start this fourth quarter. In the final eight minutes of the CRC tournament as Slukas three is no good and it was Grote that ends up with a rebound. There's a three on the other end and Mueller Pulls down that rebound. That's Tara Mueller's seventh board of the game. Catherine White, a three in the left corner, no good, and a foul over the top on Jansky. Kate's first, just the second team foul. Hey, Edgy EDU tweets, does anyone know who is announcing this Strive Sports game? Man, those guys are good. <laughs> Edgy EDU, Tim, isn't that you? Uh, it, it depends on what day of the week it is sometimes, because I know that might only be a Saturday morning gig, Eric. <laughs> Mueller and Hudson colliding in the paint. However, I'm guessing that might be my partner in crime, uh, Mr. Craig Badura, that's throwing that out there. Well, and uh, it's been fun. Talk about that podcast while we're shooting these free throws. Uh, it's It's been a, a great growth opportunity for both Craig and I. The podcast isn't about the amount of listeners that we get, but just the personal growth that we gain with the conversations that we have, and we've really enjoyed that. And you guys but check it out. Yeah, you guys talk about a lot of different education topics. Yes, and what's really great is how many people across the country are willing to share their knowledge. And there are authors that we've talked to. Mike Smith was our latest one, and and he's just a basically a professional teenager that travels across the country and. <laughs> and just talks about, you know, doing what's right and, and finding your purpose and your passion. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And, again, it's amazing if you just reach out. People are willing to, to share their knowledge with you. Where can we find all those podcasts? Do you guys have them hosted on a site or are they just on SoundCloud? iTunes, SoundCloud. Uh, if you are on Twitter, you can go to at edgyedu, and you can find them there too. And we have to thank the CEO and founder of Strive, Strive Sports, Taylor Siebert, because he is the one that kind of pushed Craig and I to, to do this. So thanks, Taylor. Yeah. Anna Sluka gets that running basket for Extra Milligan as we talk about a basketball game again. 44-28, <laughs> our score. A little over six minutes to go still here in the fourth quarter. Hudson on the block, forces her way down. Her shot too strong, though, and Beathy snags the rebound for the fifth time tonight. Sluka, hard dribble drive into the lane. Her shot just short. Elznick corrals the rebound for BDS. And here comes Lexi Cato, quickly to the front court. Stops at eight feet, knocks it down. Cato's a good player. Yes, she is. 14 points tonight for Lexi Cato uh, that she has scored. And I think she has done a lot more than just score 14. She's really made things happen for her teammates. Well, and on the defensive end, too, she's created a lot of turnovers, which lead to points. Grote picks up her second personal. Sixth team foul, so Exeter Milligan is in the bonus for the rest of this game. Foul, 
Now there's still a lot of stuff that Exeter Milligan can work on right here. And again, Coach Coach Krejci can can reassure that with with her, with his team. Just continue to work on those things that we work on in practice every day and get better at it. It, it might be more of a struggle uh, being down so many points, but you can still work on those things. And, and having the right mentality still in a, in a game like this, where it right now you know it's a it's a 17 point game, but being 46 to 29, it looks worse than 17, sure. right? If you just look at the scoreboard, um, I've always been a been a believer that sometimes scores look worse than what they actually are as Elsnick snags a rebound there and gets fouled going back up. Carly Elsnick now five rebounds in the contest go along with her 10 points and she's going to have a chance to add to that after the first foul on Hannah Beathy and the fourth foul of the half on Exeter Milligan. Don't forget the guys' championship is up next. Exeter Milligan boys will be taking on Giltner at the conclusion of this one. We'll have it for you here on strivesports.com. Elsnick makes both. She's got 12 points. Kelsey Bigelow is into the game for Hannah Beathy. And BDS still has the the full court pressure on. Yep. Now Bigelow will try to get something set up with her team down by 19. Sluka right side. Bigelow with a little drive, hanging shot from the elbow, will not fall, and Kleinschmidt with her third rebound of the ball game. Cato, nice crossover, leaves it for Great Hudson. Pass. Oh, Tara Lee can't finish, though. And Tara Mueller pulls down her ninth rebound. Tara's also got four points. Bigelow drives and knocks down a shot. Kelsey's first points of the night. Make it a 17-point game. Mentioned these two teams, though, ranked near the top of their classes. Sluka picks up a steal. And stops near half court. And we got a quick thumbs up. Everybody thought it was over and back, but a quick three there from Catherine White. Does make it a 14-point game. Well, that's five straight there for Exeter Milligan. The 30-second timeout taken by Jackson Krejci. So, like we said, coming up, Exeter Milligan and Giltner in the boys' championship game. Giltner last year runners-up to Cross County, so they have a chance to get themselves back into the uh, the uh, a championship mentality for Exeter Milligan. They were runners-up in 15, 2015. They won it in 2014. And I was curious to look back at the boys' information. Exeter Milligan, not Exeter and not Milligan, but Exeter Milligan, only one CRC title that really? in 2014. Uh, Giltner been in the CRC much longer. They won it in 2012. Then you got to go back to 92, then 84 and 83. Wow. Their tournament title. So we will have that game for you, which will be a fun one coming up. There's Alfs on the block. Spins okay. it over the top of the rim. And great good. entry pass, great ball movement. And the lead back to 16. And like you said earlier tonight, Tim, every single time Extra Milligan has thought they had something going, BDS has a quick answer. And that's very demoralizing, you know, as, as the opposing team. Grote goes baseline on Catherine White and draws the foul on Catherine. That'll be her third and the team's fifth here with 3.06 to play. So Megan Grote, remember, Megan is is exactly, well, she's not exactly, she's like 24 hours removed from 20 points and six threes. And remember, in the first quarter, she hit a three in the first 40 seconds of this game. I mean, it looked like Megan was, was <laughs> going to just pick up exactly where she left off. She took another three in this first quarter. I don't think she's taken a shot since then. <laughs> That's kind of the way the rest of the game has gone 
for BDS. They haven't needed those shots from Megan in this game. And that's the other thing about BDS. They do such a good job. You know, last night it was Megan Grote. Tonight it's really Lexi Cato keying everything. She hasn't scored. She ha I guess she has scored the most points, but um, it hasn't just been Lexi's scoring. She's really gotten everybody involved. This Sluka puts up a three on the right wing and knocks it down. Um, but BDS, I mean, a lot of different weapons. Alfs can have a big game for you if you're uh, if you're not careful down there in the post. Hudson can be effective in the post as well. And there's so uh, many weapons. Yeah, it's uh, it, it'll be fun to watch what BDS can do for the rest of the season. BDS, by the way, I don't think I mentioned their season record 16 and two coming into tonight. Their two losses to Humphrey St. Francis, who's 16 and two, and to Fall City Sacred Heart in overtime at the Mudecas tournament who is still 18-0. So, I mean, you, you've lost to two really top-quality teams as Sluka has called for a push on the far side. And you can expect BDS to go to go far in the postseason, but you never know. I mean, just like Exeter Milligan is having an off night tonight, you know, BDS could too. But just the way that they're playing tonight, it, 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 it's going to be tough to slow them down. 15-point lead with two minutes to go. And still looking for that post entry, but Beathy swipes it away. White gets it for Jansky for three, and Kate knocks it down. Timeout, extra Milligan. I think it's got to be a full timeout. Pretty sure that's all they have left. We'll step aside as well. It's BDS by 12 with a minute 45 to go. My name is William Scarf. I'm a diesel tech here in York, Nebraska for Truck Center Companies. Before I started working here, I uh, helped a uh, well, smaller mechanic shop and uh, I did some work here and there. And then I started working on some engines at, my, at home in my shop. And then uh, that's when I kind of got my jump with diesel. Um, I've liked the experience they're giving me, um, the hours they're able to give me and uh, just the training um, and all the accessories. Pays good, benefits are wonderful. Um, basically they, they offer basically all benefits. Pretty happy that I was able to find it so quickly right after. Uh... All right, we'll pick up our action. We'll get back to a truck center company's commercial later on. By the way, I'm gonna, uh, while I'm doing this, I can do a live read of, uh, for truck center companies. Yesterday, Taylor Siebert and I went to Omaha to the brand new facility that Truck Center built uh, there just off, the, uh, off of I-80, uh, past the Gretna exit uh, to their facility. And I had a chance to interview Matt Hoskinson. And if you remember the absolute glory days of Nebraska football in 1994 and five and six and seven, well, Matt was on the football team at UNL for those four years, so he's got three championships. He redshirted in 93, so his five years that he spent in Lincoln playing football, played for four national championships and won three of them, right? Well, Matt now is an employee at Truck Center Companies, and what started out as a recorded interview slash we want some good quotes to make a podcast commercial turned into a 30-minute interview, and I said, I'm not cutting a thing, and we're making the whole thing a podcast. That's awesome. So be looking for that next week on Strive Sports. Um, the uh, It will be, we'll kind of sort of brand it as the Why I Coach podcast, uh -huh. because that's what we're doing this year. But Matt was very gracious with his time and is an absolute awesome interview. That's awesome to hear. And, and if you think about it, though, Eric, if you think of the, the motto of Strive alone, whether it be Strive, Strive Sports, is let us help you share your story. And that's exactly what you're going about doing and, and sharing that. Uh, everyone has a story to tell, and, and that's what's great about what you're doing is you're allowing people to share those stories. And I, I think the coolest thing will have, and I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody because I want you to listen, but I, I, I preface the question with, with this that I asked of, of Hoskinson, I said I will. I don't know if I will ever get an opportunity like this again in my life, where I'm interviewing a former Husker, first of all, who has a direct tie to Scott Frost, while <laughs> Scott Frost is the number one topic in the state of Nebraska, in the country almost. I, right? I, I had to say, 
I need one Scott Frost story. To Matt's credit, I got three. Mm. And the one that he actually wanted to tell me is awesome. So did he share he shared all three? He shared three. And on the podcast, you'll be able to hear those three. You'll stories. hear all three. He will hear all three. As we've got some of the uh, younger girls on both sides uh, in the backcourt. So it sure looks like your BDS Eagles are going to be the 2018 CRC basketball champions as they lead it by 13 with a minute, or actually with 36 seconds to go in this one. Uh, BDS will improve to 17 and 2 on their season. Extra Milligan. 15 and five with three of those losses to these BDS Eagles. So 53-40, we'll have trophy and medal presentations coming up for you. We'll also run down the uh, final stats for uh, scores and rebounds. And uh, we'll give a couple more shout outs. And thank yous to and those who yous. are listening. Susan, thank you so much. Susan in Dublin, Ohio. The Ferris is down in Texas. Uh, all Timberwolf fans on Twitter tonight. That's been interesting. BDS wins it for the CRC Championship 53-40 over Exeter Milligan. The 2018 champions, the BDS Eagles, they won this title in 2016. They were runners-up in 17, winners again in 2018. BDS 53, Exeter Milligan 40. The cutting of the nets, the medals, the trophies, it's all coming up on Strive Sports. So again, your final count, BDS wins it for the CRC Championship 53 to 40. Final stats, scoring and rebounding here. First for Exeter Milligan, two points for Kelsey Bigelow, two points and a rebound for Jaden Papik. Seven points, two rebounds for Anna Sluka. Catherine White, nine points, five rebounds. Kate Jansky, 11 points and eight rebounds. Hannah Beethy, five points, six rebounds. And Tara Mueller, four points, nine rebounds. The biggest number is the most unfortunate number if you're extra Milligan. And the first thing you're going to point to for if you're a Timberwolf fan, 23 turnovers, 18 of those came in the first half, 11 in the second quarter, uh, all part of a 21 to 6 second quarter in favor of BDS. Individually for the Eagles, uh, Jaden Kleinschmidt, six points, three rebounds. Lexi Cato does lead all scores with 15 points. She had two rebounds, but 
like you and I were talking, Tim, more than just the 15 points. She really made things go for BDS a lot of the game tonight. Macy Kamler finishes with eight points, four rebounds. Megan Grote, five points, three rebounds. Regan Alfs with two points and a rebound. Carly Elsnick, 12 points, five rebounds. Tara Lee Hudson, five points and a rebound in the ballgame. So BDS is your 2018 CRC champions. Pictures being taken. There's nets to cut down. And then we'll be back for the boys game. Tim, that way we thought it was going to be fun. And uh, outside of the turnovers for extra Milligan, it got, it got fun again. It did. You are right, Eric. You shut me off. I did for just a second there. <laughs> I didn't think I did. Um, if you think it, it was a 13-point game, but if you looked at the, if you would, if you were to look at the turnovers by Exeter Milligan, you think this could have been a 25 to a 30-point blowout. So you know, as a coach, um, Coach Krejci, if you look at at him and what what he's saying, at what did he say after the game? I mean, it's one of those things where you just think, girls, they were just a better team tonight. Let's learn from it. Let's move on. It's something as a, as a player too. You don't want to hear a long lecture about you know what they what they could have done differently. It's just they just outplayed us tonight. That's exactly what happened. BDS fifty three, extra Milligan forty. Our stream will keep going. It'll be a little quieter perhaps, but uh, we will be ready for the boys championship. Exeter Milligan again taking on Giltner. The runners up last year. Can Giltner get into the final? Well, they're in the final. Can they get a gold medal? to take home this year. We will find out in just a few minutes after the Eagles of BDS cut down the nets here at the York City Auditorium as your 2018 CRC Tournament Champions. Thank you. 